record? It's recording. There's a red light. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Shed Sessions installation video. Oh, we're back. We're back for the cutscene. So you want to install a set of spotties, spotlights, driving lights, whatever you want to call them onto your car. You want to blind any animal that dares to stare in the direction of your new spotties. We all want to see where we're going when we're off-road or on the road in the dark. It's natural. We want to know what the hell we're doing. So today I'm going to show you how to install a set of Steady Type X, in my case Type X Pro, spotlight. Yeah. Most importantly, I'm going to show you how to do this install legally, mainly to do with the wiring of your new spotlights with whatever kit that you're using. If you install your spotlights on a rocker switch where you turn them on and off and you can do that independently of your factory vehicle's high beam switch, that's illegal. But firstly, let's get stuck into the unboxing of my Steady Type X Pros. The first thing you always recognize with Steady Gear is not only the quality of the product, but the quality of their packaging. And this is no different. It comes in a really nice matte black box. Oh, wiring instructions, exploder diagram. These are the covers. You don't need to run the covers on the Steady Lights. They do have a very sturdy lens, lens on them already, uh, but the lens cover itself does add a bit of extra protection. And you can also get some pretty cool styles in these as well. Velvet. <laughs> the foam packaging has a velvet top on it. Now for the important part of this product, let's start talking about the lights themselves. So I'll pull one out so I can have a bit of a closer look. In standard, steady fashion, it is a premium product, premium housing. The overall build quality, as always, is awesome. The uh, whole housing is a heavy duty cast aluminium, die cast aluminium, so it's really, really strong. And on the back here, we've got the uh, cooling fins because these lights under operation, especially if you're using them for a long period of time, get quite hot. So cooling fins on there. We've got the wiring going to the back here through a metal connector um, that screws onto the actual housing itself. It doesn't unplug, which is great for keeping the water out. You unplug the lights from the main harness via this uh, Deutsch connector right here. And moving over to the front of the light where all the business happens, the business end of these things. So. Inside each light, you've got 37 LEDs inside there. So there's quite a few LEDs trying to punch out as much power as possible. They're putting out just a shade over 26,000 luminums. That is a lot of light, guys. <laughs> that's a lot of light. And that's between the two of them, it's not each. So that means nothing if the quality of the light isn't good. So you've got a Kelvin scale of light, which some of you might be familiar with. If not, I'll throw a graph up on this video now for you to have a bit of a look at. But basically the Kelvin scale shows us exactly what type of light is being outputted. And in this case, it's 5,700 Kelvin, which is smack bang in the middle of the scale which is optimal in my personal opinion. So a more yellow light on the lower end of the Kelvin scale will be a little bit more dull, but on the flip side to that, it isn't as harsh to look at on your eyes, but it just isn't as bright. It doesn't feel as vibrant as something like these will. So yeah, smack bang in the middle. Steady have really thought about the light output on this and they've put a quality LED in there and something that is probably going to suit most people interested in a spotlight. Something else which is really important to mention as well is the spread of the light. So these lights have an 82 meter spread on them, which is great to see things on the side of the vehicle, which as you guys know at night is extremely important. If you've got an animal about to dart out in front of the vehicle, having a good spread will show you that animal quicker and give you enough opportunity to stop the car before hitting the animal or just slow down. <laughs> Not only do you want to see as far sideways as possible, but obviously the main reason and you get spotty so you see as far in front of you as you possibly can and these do not disappoint they're packing a massive punch with a lux distance of 1.15 kilometers that's a long way in front of you you probably can't even see that far or see anything in that distance that was worthwhile having it that far but it is there and it means the quality of the light closer to you where you can see is going to be optimal. It's not just the LEDs themselves that are packing the full punch of that beam throw, it's actually the ingenuity that Steady have put into the reflector housing itself. It works as a combination to help throw that much light output. The reflectors have been absolutely dialed in to work hand in hand with those LEDs. Moving on to the next part of this unboxing, 
is the mount and this is actually pretty awesome as well it's a new mounting style that steady have come up with and something's very different to other spotties on the market so it's die cast 10 millimeter thick alloy and it's got some stainless steel side plates on here with the steady logo stamped into it or cut out into it there and they look really good and they're actually not very heavy this is going to save vibrations that you would normally get from a full stainless steel bracket. Let's take a look what's inside one of these boxes. Ah, it's the wiring. Okay, so got like a piggyback harness there for the factory headlight harness and vehicle, so you can piggyback onto that. And then we've got the main harness here from Steady, the wiring loom. This is awesome. I know it looks intimidating, but it's really not. They're very simple, very straightforward, as I'll show you soon. So you've just got a bag of mounting hardware there for the spotties, the brackets and everything. Got a couple of Allen keys as well. It looks like there's one bag for each light. And another very important piece of the puzzle, this patch loom. This patch loom for the headlight wiring in the Navara MP300 from Steady is plug and play. I love that word, plug and play. You literally plug this in, connect it up and your lights are working. This is really important for the MP300s because word of mouth has it that the headlight wiring on these buggers is very temperamental and you can damage expensive componentry in your MP300 if you're not careful. Let's get stuck into the installation now guys and I vote we start off by installing the lights onto my Iron Man bull bar, the most exciting part of this install. Let's get the lights on there and see how they look. The exploded diagram of the light, the bracket, and the mounting hardware showing you where everything goes to make it nice and simple. So I've laid it all out there to show you what is included. Here is the canvas that I'm working with to mount up my spotlights. This is my Iron Man MP3 and a bull bar. Awesome bit of gear, guys. Now I have my Rumba control box mounted to the top side. I'm actually gonna relocate this into the inside of the bull bar soon. I've got the bracketry to do that. I'm gonna get it off the top side and declutter this space a little bit. Now, there's a couple of mounting holes that are pre-drilled from factory with the Iron Man bar, so you can mount accessories up there, which is going to be a perfect spot for us to start mounting up our steady brackets. So that can sit on there, something like that. Now, you could go ahead and just use that one mounting hole right there, bolt it down, job done. But Steady have supplied two additional slotted holes on the outside here to help you pivot the lights in the direction you want them to go. So you can move it around like that if you want to. I'm just going to go and mark with a punch where I want to drill my holes for the pivot mounts on either side. So that's the two brackets now roughly mounted onto the bull bars. So for mounting up the lights, they've got the two nut locations on either side where the nylock nuts simply drop into place and they don't move around once they're in there. And then basically you'll just put your bolt in through the outside of the bracket to mount them up. They're on the car and they look so freaking good. I'm actually really stoked with that bracketry and how you can adjust the pivoting on these lights with those brackets on the sides. That's actually really cool. So to start off the wiring portion of this video, I've laid out the steady harness in front of us to show you guys exactly how easy they make it for us to install these spotlights into our car using the harness. So basically, let's start over here. We've got the relay which ties everything together. Switched relay right there, steady relay, ooh, fancy. And then it leads down into a fused wire which goes to your power source. And if that's your battery, for instance, you've got your ring terminals, so you've got earth and power. Really straightforward sort of stuff. And then down here, coming off the relay as well, you've got your plug which goes to the piggyback harness that picks up the factory power from the lights in your vehicle, from the back of your headlights. And then coming back here, running down this way, these are the two Deutsch connectors, which go straight into your spotlights, into the steady spotlights. They plug straight into the harness that's already there on the spotties, super easy. And you've only got one more wire, this one right here, and it's super long. It does have a connector in it right there, and it's long for a good reason, because this is a switch which goes 
technically, uh, or normally, into your cabin, on and off. So these are the piggyback harnesses. These are the two that were supplied in the kit, universal ones that will suit a variety of different vehicles. And then this is the one that I purchased specially for the MP300 from Steady. So this basically goes straight, connects up to that plug there, and this piggybacks onto the factory headlight wiring in the vehicle. Okay, you know the drill, guys. Always grab your 10 millimeter spanner before you start doing any wiring on your car because you need to remove your earth strap. So let's do that right now before we start anything, before we get carried away because it's so easy to do. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by mounting my relay because that is the hub of all the wiring. Basically everything runs to that. Okay, and there it is mounted in there guys, just behind the ABS unit. Nice and secure. The cables are just running up behind it here and leading over to the battery, which I'll continue to wire in right now. So the wires coming out of the back of the steady spotlights, I've just passed them underneath my grill and that's them right there. Now you might have noticed that these plugs were in the back of these Deutsch connectors. Steady supplied them, unterminated cables, basically just allowing you to wire them into anything that you want to. We won't need them for this install because we already have the pre-wired loom. And here's the Deutsch connectors from the other end of that. So I basically just fed it in from the relay, past the battery, down there, underneath this panel, this metal panel, underneath the front headlight, popped out the other side. These just plug straight into the back of the steady spotlight plugs, Deutsch connectors. So next step, next step on the list is the piggyback harness, this guy right here. So basically it needs to plug into the back of the MP300 headlight and this is basically what allows us to do it safely. So you've got three plugs on this uh, piggyback harness. This one goes back to the main steady harness which I've showed you before and then this is just the interceptor. So what we need to do is unplug this plug off the MP300 headlight. Once you've unplugged it, basically you just need to plug one side of this steady harness into that plug and then the other one just goes back into where you pulled it from. That's all it's doing, it's just intercepting the factory wiring harness to do this modification safely. Headlight wiring is plugged in, done. So we've pretty much just got to connect it up to the battery power and get the switch fed through the firewall grommet into the cab Mount it up with the new switch that I've got, so I have to wire that in. I'm assuming this won't just plug straight in. We'll figure that out. And once it's successfully made its way through the firewall grommet, you'll find the cable in this area right here. So we're on the passenger side of the car underneath the glove box. And yeah, you'll find it up in here. You may have to look up in there with a torch and just see it sort of starting to poke through, grab it and pull it through. Um, but yeah, this is where it will come out. Now what I've done is actually fed this over to the driver's side of the vehicle because my switch is going to be over there. So what I used was just a piece of wire and fed it behind the actual set the console area so behind this area here there's actually a cavity up in there so I just fed the wire through and then just put some tape on the cable and pulled it through the other side and that way it's an easy way to get the wire around and now I can go ahead and tuck this up neaten it all up and it's behind there out of the way really easy way to pass wires through from one side to the other up to the next step well it is the next step for me anyway it might not be for you so if you're going to use the generic rocker switch that steady supplies as part of the harness go ahead and put that into your vehicle wherever you want it to go and you can continue on to the next step but if you're using an aftermarket rocker switch like me this one from steady which is an mp300 dedicated switch it looks like all of the other ones in the car keeping things nice and neat then you can go ahead and follow these steps. So steady supply this wiring diagram right here, showing you where the wires out of their harness connect up to the wires in this plug. There'll be the exception of one wire that won't be connected up to this harness, and that's the one where your dash lights are on, the illumination light. So normally I would chop them, solder them, take them back up, but I'm actually going to use some blade terminals and connect them straight back into the female terminals on the steady harness. So where I'm going to be putting my switch is in the panel underneath the steering wheel and it's pretty easy to get this off, you may have seen it in some of the other videos. It's two 10mm bolts here underneath the bonnet latch lever. So the panel now is just held in by a bunch of plastic clips, so all you have to do is grab the underneath of it and just pry it away from the rest of the dash. 
I've picked up the blank location that was in this panel, so I just popped out the blank, popped the steady switch into that spot, and it's all good and well. Now, I did have to get the illumination wire plumbed in as well. I pulled that illumination wire from the traction control switch, this one right here. So, as you can see, there's a plug for it. I traced that back to the green wire on this plug, which is the illumination for the dash lights, and I just uh, tapped into it with, a little, with another green wire and then put a connecting piece in here to the red wire on the steady switch harness. So in case you're wondering which color it was, it's the red one. And those other plugs that I fed in from the passenger side that I was talking about went behind the dash. Plugs came out through here and then I just fed them up behind the steering wheel and plugged them all together. And that's the other side of it there. So now all I need to do is plug this into the back of the steady switch and hopefully everything will turn on. Panels all back together. I've just put the keys in the ignition, got it onto accessories so I can test this out. So if I turn stalk into that position, turn the high beams on. So I've got definitely got illumination there for the um, dash lights, perfect. So if I press this, it should turn them on. There they are, they're working. You can see them in the shop fairly well. We will need to go out and align these things, but they're definitely turning on and off. Okay, so now that it's night time outside, we can finish up this installation by dialing in these new driving lights, setting them up, getting the light pointing in the correct direction. If you have installed steady lights, this will help you. And if you haven't installed steady lights, a different brand, this will also help you because the setup process is the same for all different driving lights. Now, there is two industry standards which I think are most commonly used, and that's for good reason, because one, they're quick, and two, they're very accurate. I don't think it will get it 100% accurate, but it is very, very close. You could set them up like this and leave them, and the light will be shining in pretty much the right direction for any type of driving. But I will also be heading out to a nice, long, dark stretch of road with limited to no traffic to fine tune in my lights and to show you how these ones perform. So if you want to dial them in, get that spread 100% suited for your style of driving, you can, after you've done these methods I'm about to show you, head out to a dark st stretch of road and adjust them. So the first of the two methods that I'm about to show you is probably the quickest and the easiest way to adjust your driving lights. So grab yourself a flat, straight piece of wood or a spirit level, whatever you can get your hands on that will fit between both faces of your driving lights. And that's basically going to allow us to adjust the horizontal face with both brackets loosened. You can press it against there and that will ensure they're both pointing forward. So that's the horizontal accuracy now taken care of on my lights. I've tightened the brackets back down to the bull bar because they no longer need to move. So now I need to sort out the vertical accuracy of these lights using my piece of wood or a spirit level. So there's two different ways that you can do this because the lights may sit differently on the bar on your vehicle. If they protrude past the bar, you can get a piece of wood or a spirit level off a flat surface, so flat level ground, and go up in front of it and dial in the light that way. In my case, they sit back from the bull bar, so I can't do that. So I've just loosened them off on the side pivoting points, grabbing my flat piece of wood, sitting it against the bull bar on the flat surface, and now I can adjust my lights to suit. So that's the first method that I'm going to show you on how to dial in your driving lights in your vehicle. The second method I'm about to show you is a little bit more involved, but it does visually show you what you're adjusting, which some people may prefer. You need a flat surface for the car to drive forward and backwards on. Now, whether or not that's a driveway or a flat stretch of road, it just needs to be as flat as possible, and that needs to be pointing at a flat vertical wall. So that could be the back of your garage, for instance. Now, you need to move the vehicle back from this wall when we adjust them seven to eight meters. That's roughly industry standard to adjust your driving lights adequately. So in order to do this method, you need to take a few measurements and mark them out on the vertical wall that the vehicle's facing towards. The first mark that I'd recommend for you guys to chuck on your vertical wall for adjustment is the center line of the vehicle. So pull the vehicle up to the wall and make sure the wheels are straight so you can move backwards in the same direction. And then grab something to Roughly mark out the center line of your vehicle. The next measurement you need to take is the center line of the driving light. So get yourself a flat level ground, get a tape measure and measure up from the ground to the center of the driving light. And then take that measurement across to your vertical wall and mark it out. So I've taken that center line measurement of my driving lights and I've marked out five markings on my vertical wall. And then I'll use some electrical tape to run between those marks to give myself a horizontal line. The next measurement you're going to want to take is the center distance between both lights. So in my case, 
My centre distance is 510 mil. So now we're going to take that measurement onto the vertical wall and mark it out. This is where the initial measurement and marking that we did of the centre point of the vehicle will come in handy. So my measurement centre to centre of my driving lights was 510 millimetres. Half of that's 255. So I'm going to grab my tape measure. And on that centre point of the vehicle marking that we initially put down, I'm going to put it at 255. And then I'll mark out the centre points. So now that I've got those markings on the board, I can go ahead and put some electrical tape down on those lines and I've created now two crosshairs to align the lights to. So now that I've got my marks on the vertical wall, I can go ahead and step out roughly seven to eight metres and move the vehicle back that far and then start adjusting the driving lights to the crosshairs that I've marked out on my vertical wall. Now this gives you a visual accuracy of what you're doing and how you're adjusting your lights, which I really like about this method because you can see exactly what's going on and you can move them up, move them down side to side, get them to exactly where you want the lights and need the lights to be. This method is a little bit longer. It takes a little bit more time and setup to do than the first method that I showed you. However, I believe the accuracy of this one is a little bit better and it does help you align the lights exactly where you think they should be for your driving style. I'm going for a drive to find a long, dark stretch of road that we can actually test these things out in real time to see if steady lights are as good as what everyone says they are. So I've found a really nice long stretch of dark road here with no street lighting around, which is perfect for us to test out these lights. So there is a street sign there about 100 meters in front of the vehicle, which will be good to test out the lights and how it reflects off that street sign. There is bushland off to the left hand side. So let's go ahead and hit the lights and see how they're looking, which is pretty good. give you reference this stretch of road is about seven kilometers long I might go and find something uh, where I can test with a street sign at the end of the road or something I don't know if there's anywhere around here which may have that but yeah something where I can try and see at the very end of the road maybe a kilometer long and try and see if it if it reacts to something at the end of it that street sign isn't reflecting badly either it's not looking super reflective where it's going to hurt your eyes but yeah, it's getting a nice spread. I mean, none of that bushy area was visible before. Overall, I'm really stoked with it. So, I have found this street that is extremely straight and extremely long. There is a little bit of street lighting down towards the end, which sucks, but it is still pretty dark. So, if I turn my lights off, you can see that yeah, it, it's a definitely a dark stretch of road. So, it is roughly a kilometre long. I just reset the trip timer, drove from one end to the other, and it came up with a kilometre. That did include me turning around at the end though, so it could just be shy of a K, but that is a very good spot for us to test these lights on. So, when I hit my driving lights, you can see that it's really lighting things up well. That's it, look, look how clean and crisp that light is. I'm stoked, I'm really wrapped with it. But the best part is there's a street sign right down the end of this road. Okay, so we're up the other end of the street now. I've driven the car down. There is a street sign that in fact should light up when I take the car up the other end of the street and hit the driving lights, those steady driving lights that boast a kilometer or just over a kilometer in distance that they output light. So it's time to do a little bit of myth busting here. I'm gonna chuck this camera on this tripod right here. That's looking straight at that street sign. Okay, so I'm up the other end of the street now. It is time to test out these lights. I've got the camera up the other end, set up on the tripod. Let's point this down the middle of the road, right about there.
Okay, so that wraps up the video. I've shown you guys how to install the steady lights onto your car. I've shown you how to adjust them, fine tune them for the optimum light output straight out of the box. And if those adjustments aren't quite cutting the mustard for you, you can take it down to a long, dark stretch of road and fine tune for your driving style. You can adjust the lights to suit exactly how you want them to be. I've also shown you in real time how they perform, the distance that they throw light, the spread, and the quality of the light output that these guys are putting out in front of your vehicle. I'm really happy with my purchase with the Steady Lights. They're a very prominent um, brand in the industry, in the market, a lot of people talk about them. And I think it's for good reason, the quality of the product, the installation process, and the quality of the light output is really good. There are a fair few brands to choose from, there are some brands which are definitely better than others and for a driving light, I really think it's worthwhile spending a little bit extra money on some of the more quality brand names out there to get that premium product that not only is better, but is also going to last the test of time as well because the build quality is there. Anyway, if this video has helped you guys, drop it a thumbs up. If you have any questions for me, chuck them in the comments section below. I will reply to those comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. Plenty more installations coming for my vehicle and also some adventure content as well. Some off-roading, some touring, some camping, all of that fun stuff as well. Lots of that coming to the channel. So thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.